Welcome to Ride the Line, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Kern, certified G, bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. In this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. We both had the Lions on the money line last night, and they roared to victory with ease. It was always Detroit, never Green Bay, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, man, the people in the room, welcome in to Ride the Line. Grant, I got a question for you today, and everyone here watching, are you riding? Tanner, it's been a long time since you asked me, but the answer has not changed. Of course, I'm riding just like I was riding with the Lions and the public was riding with the Lions. When I saw those betting splits, 70% of the money on Detroit, got to admit, was a little bit nervous. Not always the smartest thing to back the public, but you and I were saying, look, yes, we know the Lions are the popular pick. But they're the popular pick for a reason. The Lions are going to win that game. And, of course, it was not even close. That game was over in the first quarter. It's a damn shame because I have the over on Goff's passing yards. You have the over on Amon Ra's receiving yards. If the Packers cared to show up in the first half, those would have hit with ease. With ease. Like, Goff was on pace for a 500-yard game in the first 20 minutes of that game. But then it was just so far out of reach, they didn't even really have to do anything. They could just give it to David Montgomery a thousand times while Jameer Gibbs sat on the sideline. Yeah, they had a lot of short fields last night. My biggest problem with how the Lions played last night was in the second half, they, like, bent over and said, we're not playing to – we're playing not to lose. We're not going out there and being aggressive and trying to put points on the board. Like we're just going to run the ball on third down. Like it was ridiculous, but they still found a way to win. Went over their team total. That made me happy. I had that bet last night. Um, and yeah, Dave Montgomery versus Jameer Gibbs. That's Jameer Gibbs is not a running back for them right now. Like they don't value him. I think David Montgomery still doing a good job. So you can't really get after him for saying it, but for not running him, it's just not really interesting for Jameer Gibbs fantasy players. I saw a quote that uh, it it was like when they drafted him or something like that, where they said he's really a positionless player. And someone commented on that original tweet and said, oh, so by this, they mean he doesn't have a position because he's not going to get on the field. He just gets to watch the game the whole time. And I mean, yeah, David Montgomery isn't playing bad, but he had like he had 130 yards, I think. But he is averaging like like 3.9 yards per carry. Jameer Gibbs is over six. I understand it's good to have that that speed element off the bench a la Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard. But if you saw that, what happened with that dynamic, I mean, Tony Pollard ended up taking over the number one in the system. And Jameer Gibbs, you know, I'm not saying he deserves to be the out-and-out starter here, but I feel like he can get a little more of a workload because he's producing every time he's in there. Even when they were up by 30 points last night, he wasn't carrying the ball. Like, they, if they value David Montgomery and you want to save him, like, put Jameer Gibbs in. He looks like he's getting shot out of a cannon when he takes a handoff, which is pretty cool. Like, Dave Montgomery's in slow motion, but he's a bruiser. Um, another thing, Grant, last night, it's funny. I got a text from one of my buddies when the Lions were up 16, and he goes, this one's not over yet. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, this one's over. If if Jordan Love, this is in the third quarter, if Jordan Love can drive up and down the field another two times and then a third to win the game, and the Detroit Lions cannot score the rest of the game. I'll tip my cap to the Green Bay Packers, but there was no point in that game last night where it was close. And speaking of Jordan Love, I do want to give a shout out to somebody from the comment section on last video, Shadrach, I believe your name was. Um, really insightful comment, a lot of great analysis put into it. Ended up being on the wrong side of the pick, but hey, I mean, you know, Tanner and I have been wrong plenty of times. Just want to say we appreciate you and all the insights you put into that. But one of the things they did say in there, they disagreed with me. They disagreed with uh, my analysis that Jordan Love isn't really able to push the ball down the field. They said that he has the highest average depth of target in the league, which I'll admit I did not know when they said that. But I was coming more from a place of his decision making sometimes a little questionable. His accuracy is not not been there weirdly yesterday was his most accurate game of his career completed over 60 percent of his passes uh for the first time or for the first time this season not his career but we saw the turnover problems flare up uh in the first half it, it, he really seemed disinterested and even trying to move the ball at all is really on the second half where it opened up and to your point the Lions were playing not to lose at that point um so yeah I wasn't I wasn't overall impressed with what I saw from the Packers I think a lot of people just looked at the record see that they're two and one and they decided to go with that and say oh you know what the Packers must be pretty good and also by the way this is a quick tangent but 
this is why I don't like judging teams by the standings or, or why I don't look like looking at power rankings. Because if you look at your newspaper and you see the power rankings, well, the team that's 3-0 and is number one. And, and the team that's 3-0 and is number two. And then you got a team that's 2-1. and Like, there are good one and two teams out there. You just got to actually pay attention to what's going on. And I don't think people did that enough with the Packers. Well, when you look at the Packers, first of all, the reason the Packers lost is because Jordan loves dog water. And the defense is not that good. We knew that coming to the game. The Packers beat Desmond Ritter, who will not be in the NFL in a couple seasons. Um, Derek Carr, who is absolutely Derek trapped. Carr and Jameis Winston. And they came back against Jameis Winston. I don't think a lot of Derek Carr, though. And then they beat who else? Justin Fields. Justin Fields. So tell me on that list, who's going to the Hall of Fame? I'll tell you what. None of them. Jared Goff is that guy. He's 10 and 0 against the spread in his past 10 starts against the NFC North, 7 and 3 overall. He is that guy, the Lions of that team, Grant. But we got a lot to talk about on Sunday. There's big games all over the slate. I got some picks. You got some picks. But before we get to that, remember to follow the page, like the video, share it, subscribe, do it all, leave a comment down there. Leave a comment. Like we're serious. Leave a comment. We'll shout you out. You leave a comment. We'll shout you out. Um, and let's get into the picks, Grant. Yep, absolutely. You going to kick us off or should I? You can. Okay, I think you. I think you started on Thursday. I could be wrong, but you start on Thursday. Let's just keep that going. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start it off here with a pick that's probably going to split opinion, but I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens at plus three versus the Cleveland Browns. Now, I always talk about the importance of line shopping. A lot of books have this at minus two and a half or plus two and a half. So you look around, you can get it for a plus three. Obviously, it means you get a push on a field goal, which would be pretty good in this instance. Now, the Ravens have not been at their best to start this season. Lamar was terrible. And then he was excellent. And then he was just about average. So we're looking for some sort of consistency here. The Todd Monken sort of effect hasn't really pay, paid out or paid off yet. That the, the offense hasn't really opened up through the year, which is the whole point of bringing him in. Meanwhile, the running game had taken a step back, but the Lamar did run for over 100 yards last week. So again, inconsistency. We're still trying to work out what the Ravens offense is. What the Ravens defense is, is very good. It was Second in points allowed and third in yards allowed after it got Roquan Smith last year. Not hit that same level this season, but I do think that it it can put up a good fight against the Cleveland Browns team here that is obviously missing Nick Chubb. Deshaun Watson did have the best game of his Browns career last week, but if you're asking me, hey, is he going to perform at that level every single week? He hasn't really given me any sort of reason to believe that he can do that. And so I think you're getting a tough divisional matchup against a Ravens team that's got a lot of familiarity against the Browns, has beaten them a lot recently. I just need to see Deshaun prove it once again before I'm going to uh, lean into him here. And then one other thing, I know the Ravens are injured and all this other stuff. First of all, they're injured all the time, so they're used to playing with those. But if you look at the Ravens' last 23 games as underdogs, they are 19, 3, and 1 against the spread. 19 covers in the last 23 games as underdogs. Again, they're plus three here. I think that this is a very good spot to go ahead and grab them. I don't like the spot for either team. I think massage is not that good anymore. <laughs> I think he's not that good. I think like last week he wasn't even that good. Um, there's not a lot. There's not a lot to write home about massage right now. So I'm gonna stay away from him. I don't want him. I don't want Lamar right now because we got no weapons to work with. Everyone's injured. The offensive line's beat up. This would be a stay away game for me, Grant. I like your explanation, but I, I can't take a side here. That's understandable. Like I said, I feel like this one going to split public opinion a lot. By the way, Tanner, I know this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I did write an article earlier this week about it. And I just want to tell you this and also just tell the audience here because I find it very interesting. Uh, just off the top of your head, it's okay if you're wrong, but who do you think has the longest odds to win the AFC North right now? The longest odds to win the AFC North are the Chicago Bears. Oh, AFC North, my bad. Um, so you got Steelers, no. You got the Ravens, no. You got the Browns. That's, that's an interesting question. I would say Steelers if I had to pick. Get this. It's the Bengals with the longest odds in the division, oh, sure. but if you look at Super Bowl odds – they have the best Super Bowl odds of the AFC North. Makes so sense. they're the least likely to win the division, but the most likely to win the Super Bowl from that division. I'm, I, I, I wasn't able to like confirm this with my research, but I do wonder is that that's the first time that's ever happened in the NFL. Well, it makes, it's kind of like the Rays, like the Rays had better world series odds than the Orioles for the majority of the season, but they were behind in the standings on the AL East odds, because it's like you get into the playoffs. It's a dangerous team because Joe Burrow is going to be cooking and stuff. What are their division odds right now? Uh, as of two or three days ago, they were plus 450 for the Bengals. 
That's a good. That's a good get. They could recover. I don't I, have- see. I wouldn't be betting it, but you know, if you are somebody who thinks the Bengals have a chance, you know, if you think Burrow's going to get back from his injury soon, then I by all means, that's good value, like you said. Yeah. All right, Grant. Speaking of good bets, Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the um, NFC South. Strong bet. They competed against the Eagles. I'll give them that. They weren't good, but I think their play calling was terrible. They're getting their they're getting dominated. They're running the ball with Rashad White. Like at first down run, second down run. Then we let Baker throw on third now. It's just a bad play calling game. But they did battle the Eagles. They made multiple mistakes. It really, really should have gone to half uh, down seven. And they're playing Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're playing New Orleans Saints on the road this weekend. Buccaneers plus three and a half is my move. I think we're going to see a bounce back from the Buccaneers. And also, we can't count on Derek Carr playing in this game. It could be Jameis Winston, who I don't think you're losing a lot with. I do like Jameis. Um, But the Buccaneers have a good defense. We've seen it all year. Yes, they got lit up on the ground. But the Eagles have an elite offensive line. They have an elite run game. Um, They forced turnovers last week, though. They battled hard. They were strong in the red zone. Saints have a good defense. Probably the under is a decent move here as well. Um, but I like the Buccaneers to come in and cover in this game. I'm not saying they win it, but I think they can be within a field goal, especially if we get a little better showing from the offense, which we did down the stretch. When they just started going empty and throwing the ball, we got a much better showing. So they have to do they have to do what's working. Run the ball wasn't working last week. I think they can find ways to manipulate the Saints this week and cover three and a half. The three and a half number is what makes me like this pick a lot. I view this as a field goal game sort of either way. I couldn't tell you which team's going to win it, but I think, you know, either side getting that three and a half, I think it would make it a very strong play here. Dennis Allen, I do know, is one of the worst covering coaches in the history of the NFL. I think he covers 39% of the time. Todd Bowles, not the best coach I've ever seen, but I certainly think he's better than Dennis Allen. Uh, Dennis Allen's probably one of the worst coaches in the league right now. And again, you know, Jameis Winston, I, I think he's probably just about the same player as Derek Carr. I'm honestly a little surprised Jameis hasn't gotten another starting gig somewhere. Um, I was wondering if the Jets were going to call for him when Rodgers went down, but they've got financial concerns and their future's tied up, blah, blah, blah. But I do like this pick, Tanner. You know, I was on the Bucks and Baker Mayfield for the first time in a long time last week. They did disappoint me. But to your point, um, you know, it's, it's important to set aside your bias and to sort of look at what's been happening. The Buccaneers have been a decent team this season. Just like I was talking about with the standings, I'm not looking into what the Saints, you know, what they're th- are they three? No, they're two and one. I'm not looking into that. I don't think that means that they're, you know, one of the better teams in the NFL. So I'll be with the Bucs here as well. They're better than the Falcons. They're better than the Falcons. Like it's the Saints and the Bucks, in my opinion. Like you can't, I can't bet on Desmond Ritter. I'll bet on Baker Mayfield. He's got a big chip on his shoulder. No, when I made my season preview, I made a video of my season preview. And when I got to the Falcons, I said, give them an an average, even mediocre quarterback. And I would take them to win the NFC South, but they have Desmond Ritter. And for that, I think I picked them to go five and 12. I just, what what do you want me to do? The guy is, you guy throws for 150 yards in a game and you say, wow, he played well. That like, that's the level they're at. Yeah. All right, Grant, next pick. Okay, my next pick, I'm going to take the 49ers. Again, the importance of line shopping, minus 13 and a half versus the Cardinals. Most sportsbooks have it at minus 14, but found it here for minus 13 and a half, which means we win on two touchdowns. Now, two touchdowns obviously is a very large spread, of course, but another stat that you are going to like, Tanner, since 2005, teams that are 3-0 and against the spread and that are underdogs in week four, are only 4-13 and 13 against the spread, so they cover about 24% of the time. That criteria fits the Cardinals because they are 3-0 against the spread, but they've been dogs in every game. They were, I'm doing this off the top of my head, they were plus 7 to the Commanders, they were plus 5.5 to the Giants, and they were plus um, 12.5 to the Cowboys, and they won outright. Um, to get a two-score win as a, two touchdown underdog last week against a very good team in the Cowboys. I think they're going to struggle a lot to repeat that. And this is a 49ers team that has not only been, you know, on fire against the spread. I think they're two. Oh no, they're two and one because of that last second field bowl by the Rams, but they're eight and two against the spread when Brock Purdy doesn't tear ligaments in his throwing arm. They're also coming off of a long week of rest because they played on Thursday night football last week. This is a road divisional matchup for the Cardinals and a Cardinals team that while they have been competitive and better than expected, still probably one of the worst teams in the NFL. I think this is a spot where you see that sort of come out of them against a well-rested and dominant 49ers team. 49ers get a huge win here. They cover the minus 13 and a half. Yeah, they rock them. Not rocket science here. Very simple, Grant. 
Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner. Christian McCaffrey just recently got into the top 10 in MVP odds. I believe Brock Purdy's sitting just outside the top 10. So some more storylines to monitor there as well. Christian McCaffrey is getting like six yards of carry before getting touched. It's crazy. Yeah. That offensive line is doing wonders for him. All right. Give me the Chargers minus five and a half against the Raiders. Raiders aren't good. Jimmy Garoppolo probably isn't going to play. I don't necessarily trust them with Jimmy G in there. They haven't been able to score. Um, and then when you go to their backups, it could be Aiden O'Connell or Ryan Hoyer. Neither guy I have a lot of belief in. Ryan Hoyer is not someone that can do a lot for you. And then with Aiden O'Connell, he's very uh, – he hasn't taken any snaps in the NFL. So that's, that's the bottom line there. Um, what Josh McDaniels did last week on Sunday Night Football against the Steelers was a shame. It was it was criminal, the fact that he kicked a field goal twice, twice, down eight with like two minutes to go. And he's like, hey, you make the case that we can get a stop and come back and score. You're on the eight yard line. Just try to go score. It was the first time since the two point conversion was adopted that a team has been down by eight points with, with less than three minutes left. And they have decided to kick a field goal. First time it's ever happened. Like I can see it if you're on the 40 yard line and you're fourth and 22. Like, yeah, I can see that. I can't see it when you're like fourth and five on the eight or wherever they were. Yeah, it's just, it's inexcusable. I mean, I was talking about Dennis Allen, him and Josh McDaniels, I think are right up there for the worst coaches in the league. Yeah. And the Chargers have a really good offense. They Chargers have a bad coach too. And Brand Steele, he's not good. He will not yeah. be a good coach much longer, but I think the Chargers offense, when they get going in this game, it will be too much uh, for the Raiders to overcome. So five and a half. Yeah, the Raiders, I'm trying to, I think they're 30, they're, they're like 29, 30, 30 first in points allowed, something like that. They're 24th in scoring. There's not a whole lot to look at them for. You know, if the backups are going to play, then, you know, to your point, Aiden O'Connell hasn't thrown a pass. Brian Hoyer's at least 75 years old. And then if Jimmy G does play, you know, I, I haven't looked at the injury report. I don't know if he's been ruled officially out, but he threw one interception in game one, two interceptions in game two. Three interceptions in game three. It's not working out down there. Josh Jacobs, or not Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams and Max Crosby both said this week something to the effect of they don't have time to waste because, you know, they want to be competing for championships and they don't belong in this sort of environment. Chandler Jones is getting ready to record CTE podcast with Antonio Brown. The, the whole team is just a mess. I have no reason to trust the Raiders. So I would be going with the Chargers as well. There you go. All right. Final pick, Grant. Final, Final pick. pick is the Kansas City Chiefs minus nine and a half versus the New York Jets. Now, Patrick Mahomes in his career is only one and eight against the spread as a road favorite of more than a touchdown. So that would say, hey, you should not be betting the Chiefs here. However, the Chiefs are 26 and oh straight up and they're 19 and seven against the spread when the total is 49 points or less. This total is set at 42. And, and this is the thing. For the Jets to cover, let you know, let's say they lose by 10 points. They get as close as they can to that line. What what what, what that means the Chiefs are going to score what 17 points to 20 points. The Jets are not going to score more than at best case scenario, the Jets get like a random pick six. They're going to score like 14 points. Zach Wilson's not going to score more than a touchdown against this Chiefs team. A Chiefs defense that is not only the best of Patrick Mahomes' career, but probably a top 10 defense in the league. They rank fourth in points allowed. I mean, Zach Wilson's got the worst completion percentage, the worst passer rating in the league. Um, I, I just... I don't see a reason why you shouldn't be betting the Chiefs here. I know it's a large spread. Again, I know they struggle to cover large spreads on the road. Sometimes they play down to their level of competition, but they won 41 to 10 last week. The Taylor Swift effect is, is in full swing right here. I think this is a huge spot for the Chiefs. Yeah, I like the Chiefs to cover. I would just take a bunch of Travis Kelsey props and Mahomes props, and um, they're going to dominate. Pretty simple. I mean, but seriously though, like the chief, the Jets, Jets you score. would say ten points would be like a, what you expect from them. So the Chiefs only have to score twenty to win. Can yeah. the Chiefs score twenty? Of course, the Chiefs can score twenty points. Yeah, as long as Mahomes doesn't turn the ball over, they're gonna be fine. And um, that, and the Jets' defense is. Look, I understand that it had the emotional devastation of the Aaron Rodgers injury, and that's probably weighing on their minds. But this Jets' defense is not elite. It, it's good, but it's playing like a top 12-ish fringe top 10 unit right now. It's not even close to one of the three best in the league. It's not playing at that level. They can't do anything. Can't. It's like like we get stops. We're still not going to get scores. So it's kind of like they, they've lost the locker room. Yeah, 100%. The, the mentality isn't there. They're, they're losing the time of possession, so they're on the field for longer. Again, I'm not blaming them. It is 100% the offense's fault, but the facts are the facts.
I agree, Grant. All right, final pick here. I know you don't like this one. I'm going to take the Patriots plus six and a half. I'd like it up to plus seven. I'd like to bring it up plus seven against the Cowboys. This spread, way too big. This should be like four or five because this is an ideal matchup for the New England Patriots because the Cowboys offense has not played well. It has not been the offense. It's been the defense. And last week they got lit up on the ground for 200 yards by the Arizona Cardinals. If they can light them up on the ground, I'm assuming that the Patriots can do something on the ground. Mac Jones, when he's when he's been forced to throw the ball, he hasn't been terrible. He hasn't been the worst quarterback in the world. And defensively, the Patriots can hang in this football game. I think this is going to be a low-scoring defensive battle. New England's defense got to come to play. But this is a game that they match up pretty well. And the fact that I'm getting a touchdown here, it's tough to win by a touchdown in the NFL. And I do think the Patriots can be in this game. I think it can be a three-point game. And we've seen it. They've played really good teams. Dallas hasn't played anyone. Dallas hasn't played a soul. And there are there are two and one. They lost to the Cardinals. Patriots played the Eagles. Who else they play, Grant? The Patriots played the Eagles. They played the um God, you put me on the spot. They played the Dolphins. Eagles and Dolphins. they Jets. played the Jets. I don't know, who who Jets. they just beat. Yeah, it's a good defense. Like we're saying, oh, yeah. like, but that's a game that the Jets defense came to play a little more in the sense of Patriots aren't going to score a lot. So okay, so they they almost covered against the Eagles. They got beat by the Dolphins by a touchdown, and they were in the game. Both those games, they were driving down the field to win the game in the last minute. They were they each they got stopped on the twenty yard line each time. So Patriots aren't as bad as people think. I'm getting a touchdown against the Cowboys. I'll take that all day. You do make a very compelling case. I'm not gonna lie. That was that was a very good argument that you presented. I think that to your point, if the Patriots are going to cover, I think the total has to stay under 40, most likely. I think you get above that and you're really starting to get into struggle town. What I would say is that, you know, if I'm a Cowboys believer here, it would be that the Cowboys, we know they're awesome, they're awesome, and then they're trash, and then they're awesome, they're awesome, and then they're trash. They rarely stack those sorts of games, and, you know, they just had that really disappointing game against the Cardinals. They're back in their home stadium. I think that this would be a spot where they would try to bounce back. I don't think that if the Cowboys offense is even like playing in their B game then I don't think the Patriots have a chance to cover still don't really have much faith in Mac Jones they got little to no playmakers around him but you did make a very good case you know I maybe wait out see if you can get it for plus seven maybe then I would like it a lot more but you know what Tanner you convinced me to at least go 50 50 here I like what you had to say yeah I mean look if the Cowboys start scoring it's over but if the defense plays well I think the Patriots can move the football a little bit um, based on what we saw from the Arizona Cardinals last week. And I think Dak Prescott's trash. So we're good. It's not the good. Pa- the, the, you know what? The, it's it's. I don't want to say it's not the Patriots' fault because it is their fault. But one of the things that makes the Patriots so hard to evaluate is they're so boring in, in, in every way. Like, they don't do anything flashy. So you can't go into the game saying, okay, we're going to get a splash play here or we're going to have the deep ball over the top or we're going to have this. It's just kind of like they're just doing everything they can to scrape by. I mean, they've scored. Mac Jones has had good games. Like, they just can't put it together. They can't finish in the the red zone. That's their problem, too. Yeah, and I mean, that's the biggest problem for the Cowboys right now, too. I forget. uh, I don't think it was last week. Maybe it was the week before where they had five red zone trips and they they scored one touchdown or something like that. Um, And last week they had Dak through that terrible interception in the end zone. So, yeah, red zone zone scoring problem for a bit of both teams right now. Because he's dog water, Grant. He's he's an upper echelon good quarterback. Like you people associate him in the top tier quarterbacks, but he's dog water. Max not in the top tier quarterbacks. He's not good, but he's not in the top tier. Wait, I'm so I'm confused. Are you saying where's Dak? Is Dak above fifteen or below fifteen? He's a little above fifteen. He's a he's above fifteen. I would say based off his name alone, but he's still not good. Like he's not good. He, I don't think he deserves it. What has he done? He, Besides- he's got the he's got the Cowboys inflation. Yeah, Cowboys in place. Like you put Mac Jones with the Cowboys. Huh? If you get so here's what here's what I always I always argue with. You give Mac Jones, Tony Pollard, C.D. Lamb. Um, you know, you gave him Zeke and his hated. Like if you give Mac Jones, okay. So for, if you take the Dolphins, give Mac Jones, um, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. You don't think Mac Jones is going to be? I think Mac Jones is going to be almost as efficient as Tua throwing the ball. He has no weapons. I wouldn't go that far, but I would say he'd be like at the level Dak is playing at right now for sure. No, oh, he'd be higher. They'd be moving the football because it's they got guys that can get open. It's got no weapons. It also comes down to scheming too, though. What's going on in Miami right now is just it's beautiful football. What Mike McDaniel's doing with that offense is awesome. Yeah, I think if you gave Mac, 
if you just flip flop Mac and Tua, are the Patriots that much better than they are now? Hell no. Are the no. Miami Dolphins about the same as they are now? Yes, because there's an offensive coordinator. Mac was first round pick, had one of the greatest rookie seasons of all time from a quarterback. So he's got no he's got no weapons. One of the greatest yeah. rookie seasons of all yeah. time. Yeah, he had a, he had a really good rookie season. Uh, let's not over exaggerate it. No, it was either. not really good. It was really good. He had what do you have? He had 3,800 yards, 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, QBR 56. All right. So it's decent. It's decent. Fourth, fourth overall, according to PFF, for rookie quarterback seasons. Get on my level. <laughs> on my level. He was, if you stuck Mac, if you just flip flop Mac and Tua, the Dolphins are still going to be good and the Patriots are still going to be bad. So we, we set Mac up for failure. I'm not saying Mac's good, but he has. He has no, he has Juju Smith Schuster. And we're talking that like Juju Smith Schuster is a number one wide receiver. He's not. No, I do see your point. And going into the year, by that was my argument going into the year. I said the Patriots are screwed because Juju's the number one and he shouldn't even be a number three on some teams out there. So no, it, it's it's not Mac's fault that he's in a bad situation, but I, I still wouldn't trust him if he was in a great situation. But it's also hypothetical because unfortunately he just got dealt a relatively bad hand. He got Belichick uh, kind of when it seems to, you know, maybe he's lost sort of a hold of the league. They got re- they fired their offensive coordinator, replaced him with a defensive coordinator. There are no receivers there. So Mac just kind of walked into a bad situation. We have Hunter Henry. Hunter, Hunter- Henry's not bad. He's he's the wide receiver number one right now. <laughs> like he's the guy that catches him during the passes. There's You're not there. wrong. You're not wrong about that. We have Cole Strange, Grant. By the Cole. way, this is the second time you said we. You were talking about the Bucks as we, and now the Patriots as we. Talking, you're on my team here. We have Cole Strange. Like <laughs> you know, if you took Mac and stuck him in Miami with a good offensive coordinator in the Heat. And Tua and get put Tua in New England, the Patriots would still suck with Tua. I guarantee it. They'd be the same level of bad. No, hundred percent. I I think that holds true because I don't have a I don't have as much confidence as Mac being great and the Miami as you seem to. But I do agree fully that Tua in Mac Jones's place in New England looks absolutely no different than it does right now. You get the exact same team. Look at Baker with Mike Evans. Like Baker can cook a little bit with Mike Evans. When in Godwin. Look, 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 look. I, I, you're starting to get me to warm up on Baker. Don't overdo it. Two of three games this season, he's thrown for less than 180 yards. Let, let's apply. give him some time. If you put Mac in Tampa Bay, they would be in a better situation. If you took Mac with Godwin and Evans, they would be better. Th- then with Baker? Yeah. I thought you're a Baker guy. You're all over the yeah. place right now. I love, I love Baker. He's just got a, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's a winner. He plays to win. Baker actually, if you look at that, he had the third best season of rookies all time. So pretty crazy. Oh really? I thought they were gonna put him. I would assume he would be second. Herbert would be first. He might have been second or third. He was up there. He's top four. Was Herbert number one? Do you know? I think no. It was Russell Wilson. Oh okay. Maybe they're factoring in team success. No. Anyways. Oh. Man. That was Ride the Line. That was was Ride the Line. That was a long episode, too. Long. That was a grind of an episode. But we got through it for the people. Drop your comments. Share. Subscribe. Follow. If you're not subscribing, I don't know what you're doing. We get free plays on here all the time, Grant. You can take us out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Like Tanner said, before you click off this video, you got to press one little button. It's the subscribe button. Tanner and I are going to be here throughout the entire NFL season and beyond, giving you our best betting picks, breaking down the matchups and breaking news, everything that you guys want to hear. You want to be a part of it. So smash that subscribe button. Join the community. Like the video if you did enjoy. Keep riding, and we will see you all next time.